So my first interview is with a lovely lady called Shakti. Shakti Shangal. So not only did I want to talk to you about publishing a book, but also speak to you about what you do, because I'm so intrigued with what you do. Okay, well, my advice, I'm a bit of a crazy lady from the Highlands of Scotland that went on one heck of a journey um, from self-sabotage to becoming a healer teacher, really. Um, so on the progress of being self-sabotage to self-destruct to turning point, being visited by Archangel Michael and that was my turning point um, and thought right okay I'm going to have to change my ways. So I did, went to college and progressed for 15 years, being initiated beyond belief, visited by ascended masters, angels, all different kinds of beings that wow. I'd never experienced before. Wow. So I really want to know about the whole twin flame thing. Because it's something that I've been thinking a lot about lately and I want to know what your experience is and how you knew that you were in a twin flame relationship. We want to know guys, right? <laughs> about twin flames. <laughs> okay, well the twin flame journey very much started as a child if I was really to go be honest with myself because I knew from a child that there was this one person that I had to find. My friends thought I thought I was a bit weird. They all, they all thought you. They thought I was just an old romantic. They thought I was just a romantic old fool, really. Mm. Um, but then what happened when I was younger was I went on this search to find this one person. So I ended up being in a roller coaster of relationship after relationship that were just all wrong. Um, and I just gave up on the idea. I gave up it completely. I was sick of relationships. I was sick of them going wrong. Mm. I just wanted my life to be happy. So. And then of course I opened up my salon and I kept on getting this twin flame card and I thought well, what's a twin flame? I didn't know what that was, never even heard of it before. Um, I, but I kept on pulling it all the time. Um, and as much as I was getting visitations, by this point I was already getting visitations from Jesus anyway telling me what to do healing wise. And then the next hello, once I started getting this um, twin flame card I got introduced to Mary Magdalena through Jesus and he told me that he was, she was his twin flame. And I was like, so this all came to you through, yeah, through asking what a twin flame was. Um, and then I found myself being taken out into woodlands and I was like, why am I going into the woods today? I'm in for a big surprise kind of idea. And I'd find myself sitting at twin trees. Do you know what I mean by a twin mm. tree? Where it's like one stalk at the bottom, but it comes into two and they twine together. Yeah. I always seemed to sit with trees that were twining together. And I was just sitting, I'm going to meditate state and just, right, okay, well, what, am I, what am I learning here? And through the meditation, I would pick up that when two become one and they intertwine as one, they go to great new heights. Oh, I love so, that so much. <laughs> so I thought, okay, so that was like the twin flame story for me. And then I went up to Elgin and opened up a healing centre. And this guy came in about who insisted that I was his twin flame. And I was like, no, you're not. <laughs> I just knew there was this weird feeling inside. I was just like, no. And I resisted in every shape or form. But eventually I surrendered. I was like, okay, we'll go out together. We'll see what happens. As soon as we intertwined, my energies went raj and we couldn't be together. So we separated. And I thought, oh, I knew. I knew you wasn't you. Yeah. Um, and then um, an old boyfriend that I'd been with for like 12 years on and off, he came back in the scene and insisted that I was his twin flame, because I'd been starting to write poetry, twin flame poetry that were heart-wrenching, nine poems within nine months of just automatic writing, scribbling in the middle of the night, driving me nuts, and it wouldn't stop until the poem was written, and there'd be nine poems and they're heart-wrenching. Um, Have you got them in a book? No, not yet, but they are on Facebook under Serafina Allen, because I, I was going to use my pen name, it was going to be called Serafina Allen, so there wow. is a Facebook page dedicated especially to twin flames, especially with these poems, and I've done nothing with it. Since I wrote that poems, they're gone, and they're done. Wow. Um, and then... I can't wait to read one now. And then I, I find myself going on this... I married that guy that I'd been on a 12-year on and off relationship, mainly because um, I just knew he wasn't going to go away until I did. So, <laughs> so we did. You married him. So we married him. Well, I said to him, if you want to be with me, you're going to have to marry me. And uh, we, so we did. <laughs> and we got married. We had a beautiful day and um, three months later he kicked me out. <laughs> I was homeless with nothing 
and I um, had to get food parcels from the government and was on my arse with two little kids and two little dogs and didn't know what I was going to do with £2.47 in my purse. Wow. Ended up in the um, west coast of Scotland. I thought you were saying the lost property. Yeah, well, I nearly did. <laughs> I thought I was going to be myself. Because um, I had no family really around about me. I'd stopped talking to my family by this point. Didn't have a husband anymore. Um, after 12 years of a roller coaster, emotional roller coaster yeah. with him, and then finally marrying, getting married, and three months later being on my arse. So, yeah, it was a bit of a nightmare. So, tell me about. Simon and the lead up to meeting Simon. <laughs> the lead up to meeting Simon, when I got to the west coast of Scotland, um, also after being on my arse, I found myself always going on these little wee road trips with my best friend, just got in car, up in Scotland. And we always called them the mission of love. Because it was always on this search to go and find this person who's going to make my heart go. Oh, 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 oh. And we always went on these road trips and we would get there and go, no, it's not right, and come home. Mission of Love is um, Celicia and Alandro's project. They put it on every, it's like a Tantra weekend for um, people to go along to learn more about Tantra. Um, Celicia and Alandro do it every year. They've been doing it for three years. This will be their fourth year. They're doing so I year. thought you said when you go on a mission for love, you, that was your road trip? That was my road trips. I right? see, but, but then, then there's also... Yeah, but I then see. what happened was I went to Facebook one day and I got this invitation to the Mission of Love. And I was just like, yes! <laughs> finally! <laughs> I've been doing all these lovely road trips and now I've been finally... There's a real Mission there's of Love. There's a real Mission of Love. <laughs> so I thought, and all I seen was Mission of Love Yoga. And I thought, finally, I'm going to meet my twin flame there. I just knew I was going to meet my twin flame at a yoga retreat and I tried to get on yoga retreats and never got any success and then this one came up, invitation, I just was like, where do I pay, where do I pay, get the pay button and then I phoned this guy and I was like, get your arse onto the mission of love, we're going and I thought, you know what, I better go and read what this mission of love's all about I found out it was Tantra and I big died because <laughs> I'd been avoiding Tantra for three years I'd been asked, people had been coming to me and asking me for Tantra and I was like but if you want that shit, there's the door, get out. Because um, I was just raging. And I didn't know why people were coming to me for Tantra. And of course I didn't know why I was reacting the way I was either. I just didn't... Why were you reacting that I way? I didn't know. I just knew. In my head, it was like people were asking me for sex. Right. And in my head, I was having none of that. Yeah. I wasn't a sex therapist. I was a masseuse. And I'd had lots of trouble getting oh, my business see. up and running. So you thought they were coming for tantric massage? Yeah, that's what they were asking for. People yeah. were asking me for tantric massage yeah. and I was like, I don't do that. I don't yeah. do tantra. Yeah. But I had no knowledge of what tantra was at that time. It was just something that was stuck in my head mm -hmm. that this is what people were asking for and I was having none of it. And here you were about to go on a tantra weekend. Yeah, and I'd paid my money and thought, shit, it's tantra. <laughs> I paid all my money, went down there, got my friend, picked her up, said, come on, we're going to my mission of love. Off we went down to Durham um, and the car I parked next to was Simon's car. Simon was the first person to arrive. We were the second people to arrive and we parked right next to Simon's car, unaware that that's what we had done. Didn't know Simon at that point. Seeing this guy sit in the car, I just thought oh, he must be going to this this weekend as well. But okay, um, I was panicking, thinking I was going to get Roger sideways because that's what I thought in my head tantra was, and it's not. Do you know what I mean? That was my thought process, and I was panicking. And after being sexually abused as well, you can imagine sheer fear. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, got into the weekend, and well, we got into the the foyer, started meeting people, saying hello, and Simon was the first person who actually struck a conversation with me. And we spoke about Kundalini Yoga, so that was it, starting the conversation. And um, got up the stairs to her room, and I said to just got him, he's a pitiful, right? And she was like, I thought you'd like him. And we found ourselves being paired up, um, even when we were blindfolded. That was one of the initiations, you were blindfolded and guided into the room and sat down. And, yes, and, and given chocolate or something. Yes, that's yeah. right. <laughs> food, yes. Yes. fruit yeah. and chocolate and smells and yes. to heighten all your senses. Yes. Um, and, and the person who was sitting on my right hand side, I didn't know who they were, didn't even pick up on the energy, nothing. Sitting on my left hand side, I knew it was Simon. Um, his toe touched my toe and I thought, that's Simon. Wow. I just knew it was him. Wow. Then he breathed and I thought, oh, yeah, definitely it was Simon. So after him touching the toe and I realised it was him, he took the blindfolds off and sure enough it was him sitting next to me and I just thought, 
<laughs> just loved it. So after that, um, it was like, every time I see it, it was like, morning. <laughs> and I would just touch him and caress him all the time. So it was like, very much putting out the signal that I liked him. But he did nothing, responded to nothing. And then we went to this workshop called the um, Sexual Alchemy. And I thought, oh, quite like the sound of that idea. So I went along to that workshop and Simon was at it. So even at workshops we went to, we found we went to the similar workshops. So we went to a, a, a workshop was about awakening the chakra system or something and he didn't have a blanket. So I gave him a blanket and I stood next to him and we did the workshop to, well, all together really, but he was sat next to me. And then this particular one, the sexual alchemy, um, we recognised we'd have to pair up at some point and I thought, oh, I want to pair up with Simon. I want to share, I want to share that experience with him. And um, so I, when the women got asked we had to do certain exercises to prepare ourselves for being in, in sexual alchemy with someone else. So I thought, okay, um, so when the ladies we did the exercises so you knew what you were supposed to do when you went home and practice, that was fine. And then the teacher asked us if we wanted to share and I thought well I want to share with Simon so I'm going to sit where I am so thinking that he would would match up would pair up and then the guys there was more men than what there was women um, really yeah oh, there okay, was the there was more men than what there was women. the guys um, got asked as well who wanted to share and I seen the guys put up their hands but Simon didn't and I was like shit who am I going to be matched up with now so I was like ah oh. but Someone matched up with me anyway, and I didn't feel as if I would, could just pull away after saying I was going to be a part of it. So I shared the experience anyway. With, what was the experience? It, it was about sharing energy between one another, but the guy was supposed to hold space to enable the woman to open herself up energetically to share the energy. Okay. So um, it was quite a beautiful experience actually. And of course, the person that I shared with, we took the energy right up, and um, it was a, quite a heightened experience. Um, but I had gave Simon my, my sheepskin rug thinking that we were going to match up later and so he came later at the end of the experience he came and he went there's your sheepskin rug and I thought oh shit he's got the hump with me because um, obviously he had to sit and watch me be energetically with another guy and it couldn't have been very pleasant for him to be fair and um, and the following morning, we came down for breakfast, and Simon, up until now, Simon had always worn a hat, so I didn't know what he, his player looked like or nothing. And he came downstairs the following morning after having a shower, and I just thought, oh, fuck, now I look amazing. And I just went, good morning. <laughs> and he was like, enjoy yourself last night then. And I went, yeah. And I thought, hmm. And he goes, so never thought no more of it. Sat down at the breakfast table, having our breakfast, and he openly admitted to everybody that he quite, felt quite jealous that I had been with this, he called it a young buck of a guy. And, um, and I turned around and said, well, that's what happens when you don't share. And that's all I said to him. So that was on the Friday, I think it was. And then on the Saturday morning, there was um, a workshop called The Inner, Inner Marriage. And I thought, I'm definitely going to that. So I went to that, along with Jaskara. Jaskara and I went down to the, the Inner Marriage workshop. Simon didn't go to that one, but we was there. And I very much experienced the inner union of the masculine and feminine energy within my own self, intertwining all the way up to the point where it came up to the crown chakra. It was like a masculine and a feminine golden fairy holding each other, heads bowed to one another, saying I do. So I very much felt the inner union had happened, the, the inner marriage had happened for oh, me. Wonderful. And it was absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, so there's the, the exercise there. I very much just felt in total bliss with myself. I just thought, Cah. So later on that night, there was very much going to be doing a cacao ceremony. So we got upstairs after lunch, and I think it was getting ready for dinner. Um, and I said to Jaskara, I'm going all out tonight. And she was like, I won't see you in the room tonight then, will I? And I was like, oh, I don't know about that. But I'm going all out tonight, and I guess because I didn't get Simon last night, I said, but I'm bloody going to get him tonight. And she was like, okay. And she goes, say, so what are you going to wear? And I goes, I want to wear your dress. <laughs> <laughs> now she'd taken two dresses down with her, one for her and one for me anyway. So I said, I go, and when she showed me, I was like, I'm wearing that dress and I ain't wearing a bra. <laughs> so she was like, 
you really are going all out. She goes, when you're wearing your feet, I goes, I'm wearing your shoes. <laughs> so I took her shoes off her, I took her dress off her, um, I didn't shave my legs, I didn't even have a razor with me, they were all stumbling in my head, I was like a hedgehog. <laughs> I <laughs> put a bit of mascara, put a bit of lip bit, and that's all, I don't really wear lots of makeup anyway. Got my hair all done, came downstairs, sat down for the evening meal, Simon came in a bite and it was funny. Came in a bite and he was just like, alright if I sit here, and he stood up and he just went, oh hello, and I went, alright. <laughs> so he sat down next to me, we had evening meal, and bless him, we went to go through to the, the ball, ball room to go and do the cacao ceremony, he opened doors for us and everything, mm -hmm. um, proper gentleman like, um, and I felt like a princess, mm -hmm. I felt absolutely blown away. And still hadn't really decided to say that we were going to do anything together, was even going to meet up, nothing. But we chatted a lot. Did you know at this stage? I, well, I had a feeling. Yeah. Do you know, I just wanted to know more about him. Yeah. Um, so we sat down and even people that were like there for day visits actually thought we were a couple and actually said, how long have you been together? And we're like, we've just met. Wow. Do you know what I mean? So Simon asked me if I wanted to come up to his room and I was like, well, what's the rules? What's the boundaries? And um, he went, no fucking. <laughs> and I was like, perfect. Um, I go, so hang on, are you sharing a room with MD? And he went, no. And I was like, all right then. Um, so we did, we spent the evening together and we just lay together and talked. And I gazed and talked mm. and I gazed. And it was like, wow, I never experienced anything like that before. To mm. hold that connection yeah. with someone and feel that. Ah, I came home a completely different woman. Um, on the Sunday when we was all coming home, that's when we realised we were parked next to one another. Um, and he said to me, because I'm going to come to Scotland and see you. And I was like, you'd be welcome. So we text back and forth every day. And then two weeks later, I decided I was going to send some tantric energy down. I decided I was going to use what I'd learnt and see what happened. So I lay in my bed that night, visualising myself inside a lotus flower, in the lotus position with Simon and sent him the energy of what I was visualising in my head, going to sleep with that thought process. And the following morning I got a text message saying, I don't know what you did to me last night, but I've booked my flight, I'm coming up this weekend. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so he came up to see me. Um, it showed him my dreams, what I wanted to do up in Scotland. And um, But once he started to learn about the kind of things I do, he was like, do you know what? You're in the wrong environment. You're not going to survive up here doing what you do. Come to London. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I can survive in London. Energetically, I can fragment really easily. And if energy's harsh, I can't cope with it. I go, so it depends. So then I came down to see him two weeks later. And stayed for, was supposed to be a week with my daughter down here. She went home by bus by herself and I stayed for an extra week. And um, then I went home, moved house with my son. My daughter stayed in, in where we were living in La Karen. And um, then I came back down to spend some time with Simon. Stayed, then went home again um, and spent Christmas with my kids early. And then came down here for a month in December and decided that if I was going to stay down here, I needed a job. So I found a room to rent and then moved the, my son down and we've been here ever since. <laughs> so, wow. It was really fast. I mean, if you think how we met at the end of September, didn't really get together until the 1st of October. That was like the night that we spent together. And then literally by the December, I'd not officially moved in, but was here uh, and never really properly left really. And mm. um, went back to Scotland to take my business stuff down. Then went back to Scotland to collect my son. Mm. And um, and then I've been here ever since. Wow. So at what point did you realise Simon was a twin flame? When I got home from the Tantra weekend, I got home and everything in my business changed to Twin Eagles. Because um, prior to that had been me wood publishing, me wood coaching, and I'd always, my divorce hadn't went through um, because I was hanging on to this name and all of a sudden um, when I came home from the Tantra weekend my business changed to Twin Eagles and I knew that Twin Eagles symbolised twin flames that soared to great new heights Wow! Um, and I just thought he's my twin flame, it's done um, and that was the start of it for me um, wow. um, but Simon didn't have the same thought process, he didn't even believe in twin flames he thought it was just a romantic who do you know what I mean? And I was like, but you know what? Even if it is just a romantic notion, is it not like a, a nice thought to have? 
that you are the person mm. that I'm destined to be with. Mm. I just want to speak to you about your books very yeah. quickly. Yeah. You've written several books and you've been part of a few trilogies, but what's the book that you had that was a, a number one bestseller? Yeah. Number one She best. picks from her collection of books. So this one, um, after doing all the com other books with other people, anthologies, I decided to do my own anthology and um, learn how to do it all myself. So I did. Amatize has been on Amazon twice now. Um, two years and then became bestseller twice in two years. Fantastic. Um, first time with, with CM Publishing and then again. And what's Family Ties about? Family Ties is about what binds us and tears us apart within a family. Because when it comes to family life, there, we go through so much stuff and it does do tear us apart, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, we're always still banged together. So I decided, after all the trials and tribulations I went through with my own family, people were asking me, how did I survive? How did I get through it? And I thought, well, if people are asking me that, then obviously there's a market for it. So I decided that why not write about it? Absolutely. So I wrote nine chapters in that book, um, all about what I went through with my family and how did I get through it. So. What tore me apart with my family and how did I bind myself back together? Wonderful. Um, right. So that's what that book's about and it went to number six in the bestseller list. And congratulations and this lady is a beautiful presenter. I saw her at the Awaken the Goddess Festival and you're doing Mind Body so Mind Body Spirit? Mind Body and Soul, yeah, Mind Body and is it Mind Body? Mind Body Spirit, it used Mind to be Body called. and Soul Experience it's called now in London. Okay. Mind Body and Soul Experience. And when's yeah. that? It's in October. And what will your yeah. workshop be on? It's going to be about um, my real work, because that was what I started writing about. But now I'm actually channeling the words in of the Galactical Council, um, the Twin Eagle Collective, and I'm writing the Twin Eagle Vibration. So I got guided to create my own Oracle deck. Um, so I've got my own Oracle deck. I've been guided to create my own CD. So through the help of Simon's son, he gave me the music and I did the voiceover and we've created a CD. Fantastic. Um, a guided meditation CD and I'm in the progress of finishing off writing the book and it'll be done, ready for October to promote all three and I'll be doing a workshop talking about the Twin Eagle vibration and how to get into a state of divine union. Um, so taking yourself from the chakras, awakening your chakra system to gain access to the auric system, to gain access to the divine union system where you become one and it's about being in unity with the Twin Eagle Collective. I love it, I love it, I love it. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Mm. Very welcome. Thank you, and yeah, it's been great. Really enjoyed Fantastic. it. Thank yeah. you. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs>